proudly we hail... New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the United States Army. There's an old saying that goes, the more things change, the more they remain the same. As far as Private Edgar Galileo Weatherby is concerned, there haven't been any changes in more than 50,000 years. At any rate, our story concerns itself with one man's view of warfare, and it's called the primitive man. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment. But first, young man, let's talk about your future and America's future. They're important to each other, you know, and to you. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility. And to meet this responsibility, the Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you, a job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Learn all about the benefits you can have in the United States Army. And now, the proudly we hail production of The Primitive Man. Well, I've been in the Army now for, oh, about uh, 16 years. Long enough for most of the recruits in my outfit to think of me as an old soldier. Well, I've learned a thing or two about soldiers, and the most important thing I learned about soldiers is that they're the same as anyone else. Veteran soldiers are no different from veteran doctors, bricklayers, tea tasters, or school teachers. Veteran soldiers, doctors, bricklayers, tea tasters, and school teachers usually get together and bat the breeze about the old days. Excuse me, the good old days. And they usually carry on about how the new fellas coming into the field can't hold a candle to the old timers. Well, when my colleagues start talking like that, I usually take a pass. I think there's nothing wrong with the new fellas. I go further. As far as I'm concerned, the new group of guys we got coming into the Army, anyhow, are every bit as smart, resourceful, and dependable as we ever were, if not more. And all of which is uh, uh, kind of an introduction to a story I want to tell you, which will explain to you why I am going to go down into the history books. Now, uh, you said to yourself, what did Sergeant First Class James Prescott ever do that entitles him to a paragraph in the history book? Well, you could uh, guess from now to the cows come home, so I might as well tell you. I am 50% responsible for the Witherby Prescott discovery. And what is the great Witherby Prescott discovery? You listen and learn. Believe me, I learned. It all started a little while before the fighting in Korea. I was with an infantry division in training down south. If I do say so myself, I'm a pretty good training in non-com. I guess I just naturally like to teach, and I know that I get a kick out of overhearing the fellas in the outfit say, uh, Hey, that Sergeant Prescott is okay. He sure makes that stuff sound interesting. Yeah, nobody falls asleep in one of his classes. Boy, ain't he a card? And as for the classes themselves... Now, we, uh, we have the rifle. It is termed the Garand Model 1, better known as the M1. A semi-automatic, caliber 30, hand-operated weapon working on the captured gas recoil principle. I, uh, hey, I, I saw you scratch your head, Collins. Already I'm getting a little bit too technical, am I? Well, I did it just to prove how you have to start with the simple, and you work your way gradually. And by the time we're finished studying this rifle, you'll be able to take it apart and put it together blindfolded. You'll understand its principle and operation and make up so thoroughly that if this gun didn't exist, any one of you would be able to invent it. Very well. All right. Now, here we have the M1. Now, primitive man did not have a rifle. Primitive man 
engaged in a type of warfare much different from our own, since primitive man was quite ignorant. What's the matter, Weatherby? Uh, uh, nothing, Sergeant. You had a very pained look on your face, Weatherby. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I wasn't aware of it. Did I say anything to offend you, Weatherby? Uh, 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 truthfully, Sergeant, you did. Yeah? What was it? I'd rather not discuss it. I wouldn't take that attitude, Witherby. You'll find that soldiers create a much better outfit if they put all their cards on the table. Oh, yes, Sergeant, I agree. That's sound basic psychology. However, the reason I don't think any further discussion on the topic would be germane is that it would certainly create an extremely complicated digression, and although I may have been offended, it was nothing personal. Uh, yeah. Well, well, uh, to continue now, you see? <laughs> remember that young man's name. It's Edgar Galileo Witherby. And but for him, there'd be no story. Well, we spent the rest of the day studying the M1 rifle, and young Mr. Witherby didn't have any more to say. As a matter of fact, I was about ready to forget him. And uh, he was kind of easy to overlook and forget. He was about, you know, medium height, maybe 21 or 2, slim, sandy hair. Nothing about him that uh, would make you notice him in a crowd. Well, uh, on that night, I was sitting in my room in the barracks writing a letter, and there was a knock on the door, and of course, if you wanted to guess who it was, <laughs> you'll be right, for shot. Well, Witherby, come in. Hey, sit down. <clears throat> uh, Sergeant Prescott, I, I wanted to talk to you about this afternoon. What about this afternoon? Oh, oh, this afternoon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, Sergeant, you, um, you were absolutely wrong. Uh, not about the rifle. Uh, that's your field. You know all about it. But you were completely in error when you said primitive man was ignorant. Primitive man happens to be my field. I'm an archaeologist. Is that so? Uh, there is no evidence to enable us to conclude that primitive man was ignorant. To the contrary, he was at least as intelligent as we are. Is that a fact? I didn't want to bring this up in front of the rest of the platoon. I didn't want to embarrass you. Well, well thanks, uh, what are you? You're an archaeologist, huh? Well, I've never had one in my outfit before. Are, uh, are you the fellows who go around uh, uh, digging up old bones? Oh, we huh? study ancient civilizations <clears throat> and cultures. Uh, now, as far as primitive man is concerned, everything we know today is based on his exploration. It was primitive man who discovered fire, how to use tools. All right, all right, Witherby. Uh, I apologize. I'm not the man to low-rate anybody. I just wanted to make my position clear, Sergeant. Witherby, from now on, any discussion that this company has about primitive man will be conducted on a very high plane. Well, that was the day we got our nickname. From that day on, throughout the entire division, L Company was always referred to as the primitive men. Well, as I say, there were times it was a positive pleasure to listen to Witherby talk about how there was very little new under the sun. But in time, there came the day when we all started talking about something else. Korea. Well, soon after the shooting started, we were preparing for uh, overseas shipment, and after all the necessary preliminaries were completed, we were sent into the line. And believe me, things were certainly primitive enough. I don't think that anybody in the outfit thought that Korea was an exciting place, but uh, Witherby was really living. We had just pushed the Reds out of some little farming village and uh, were digging in against a counterattack. I was making the rounds of the foxholes and checking up on my men. Everybody was present and accounted for, except... Witherby. Hey, Slocum. Where's Witherby? I don't know, Sarge. What do you mean you don't know? He's your buddy, isn't he? Yes, yeah, Sarge, but... Well, I don't know what could have happened to him, Sarge. As a matter of fact, I'm getting worried myself. I guess he just, uh, disappeared, that's all. How can a man just disappear? Now, now, wait a minute, Sarge. Look, my squad was moving up through that small village about a mile back. Ah, we didn't run any resistance there. What could have happened to him? Witherby was bringing up the rear. He was supposed to be behind me. Hey, sniper. Maybe a sniper got him. But I didn't hear a shot. Sergeant Prescott, we'll dig defense positions along this ridge. 
Have you checked the platoons? Captain, I'm afraid I got one man missing. Who? Witherby. How? I don't know yet, sir. Well, we haven't run into the enemy. How could we lose a man? Slocum here thinks Witherby disappeared as we passed through the village. First platoon reported to me that the village was clear. Yes, sir, but we just walked through it. We didn't search any of the houses. For all we know, the Reds may have had a patrol hidden in there and been lying low to uh, pick off a prisoner. Prescott, take a squad and go back there. Find out what's going on in that village. While the captain alerted the line that we might have trouble in our rear, I took a squad and headed back to the little collection of huts down the road which we saw fit to call a village. I don't mind telling you right now, we were one nervous outfit. I wasn't taking any chances. I brought a light machine gunner with me, and as we approached the houses, I found a position for him about 50 yards away where uh, he could cover us. I put a BAR man on his left and a rifle grenade team on his right. Then I took the rest of the squad and single file we walked carefully, and I mean we wouldn't have broken any egg we stepped on toward the first house. Hey, you fellas. Hey, you keep as close as you can to cover. I'm going to walk into that house. The two windows facing us. Make sure no one pokes a rifle out of any of them. All right. Here goes nothing. Open up in there. Slocum, I'm going to open the door. Be ready. Hello, Sergeant. Witherby. Witherby, you all right? Am I all right? Why shouldn't I be? Is anybody around? As far as I know, the place is deserted. I looked in all the houses, couldn't see a living soul. What happened to you? What are you doing here? Why aren't you with the company? Oh, come with me, Sarge. I found something. I'll show you. Outside, around the back. Witherby, what did you find? It's the most amazing... I, 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 I couldn't get over it. Look. What is it? What is it? My man, how can you ask? Isn't it obvious? It's a plow. A plow? Witherby, did you goof off just to look at a plow? Now, Sergeant, I couldn't just walk Duh. past here without stopping to study the fascinating implements these villagers were using. It's it's, it's why it's like going back 10,000 years. Oh, for crying out loud. I was looking at the plow this farmer was using. Do you realize these people use methods of agriculture that haven't changed since the Stone Age? You don't This say. could be a, a, a Neolithic village. Socially, culturally, economically, nothing has changed here for thousands of years. Now, look, Witherby, I don't want you wandering off. I'm coming back here when the war over. I must try to... That's her. fine. You come back here when the fighting's over. Right now, the fighting's... Get on! Well, everybody else, Korea was just mountains, mud, and two-by-four villages. But Witherby dies ah, like a kid let loose in the candy store. Everything to him was exciting, significant. How the people built their huts, how they plowed their fields, how they harvested the crops. All he could talk about was what a tremendously enriching experience all this was. Well, I'm sure the rest of the guys must have thought he was nuts. Then came, as they say in the novels, the fateful night. The old man needed a recon patrol. We sent out four men on what should have been a routine mission, but only three of them came back. What happened to Witherby? Sarge, i look on it, Sarge. I don't know. Cut it out, Slocum. He wasn't hit, was he? No, Sarge, and look, if he was, do you think we would have left him? Well, was he taken prisoner? No, Sarge. Then what happened? He, uh, he just told us he would be slightly delayed and for us to go on ahead. I don't know who's crazy here, you, me, or him. Oh, I think he is, Sarge, and I... I'm afraid to say it, but I think Witherby has finally jumped the track. He's mad, Sarge. Stark raving mad. Where did you last see him? Well, Sarge, we were we were following that dried-up little gully on a map when we kind of stumbled into a cave. We took a look inside, and, and then something seemed to happen to Witherby. What? I don't know. He, his eyes seemed to light up, and his hands started shaking, and he started to mutter. Oh, no, 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 it can't be true. Well, anyway, me and Drake and Rogan just looked at him, and I said, come on, let's go back. And he said, you fellas go ahead, I'll see you in a little while. Well, we argued with him, but he didn't even answer us. Then we saw it was no use. There was nothing we could do with him, so we made our way back without him. I don't know, Sarge, I don't know. Did we do wrong? Well, what else could we have done? I don't know either. How am I going to handle this? What am I going to tell the captain? <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production of The Primitive Man, 
And we will return to our second act in just one moment. Today, you young men of America have an excellent opportunity to learn a trade that will assure your future. Under the Reserve for You training program, your Army is training young men in such interesting fields as radio, radar, electronics, guided missiles, and that's just the name of few. Actually, there are over 150 courses to choose from. That's right, 150. And you can make your own choice and receive a letter of acceptance which guarantees you a seat in the course before you enlist. You can become a qualified technician trained to do a real important job. And what's more important, to do it right. So, for full information about a real exciting career, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Ask all about the Reserve for You training program. Remember, there's complete information without obligation. Of all the men Sergeant First Class James Prescott has served with in the Army, well, believe me, certainly Private Edgar Galileo Witherby is the most unique. Witherby is a young student of archaeology, a man who is an authority on the cultures of primitive people. For all that, Witherby is likable and a real first-rate soldier. The outfit is in Korea, and Witherby and three other men were sent on a patrol. The other three have returned, but Witherby has refused to come back. When last seen, Witherby was in a cave. Just what got into Witherby and how to account for his unusual action is a matter of intense speculation to one Sergeant Prescott. The patrol came back without Witherby about an hour before dawn. But once it became light, it's too late to do anything about Witherby that day. And we spent a long morning and a longer afternoon fighting off a red attack. And the end of the day, he saw our positions unchanged. Well, as soon as it became dark again, I approached the captain. Oh, Witherby, Witherby, Witherby. If it weren't for that Witherby. Yes, sir, but Witherby's a good guy, sir. He just has his odd way. Oh, but this latest thing. Sergeant, it's serious. Witherby was sent out on a patrol. Why didn't he come back? Uh, sir, I know Witherby's been a, well, a certain amount of trouble, but uh, sometimes I think he's worth it, sir. Oh. At least four guys in this outfit are alive today because Witherby personally attended to that red machine gun. And how about the time he moved back under fire? Got us the ammo we needed to hold off an attack. Oh, let's face it, sir. He's one of the best men we have. I guess he's entitled to be just a little bit crazy. The only thing now is I, I don't know just how to handle it. How do I list him? Missing in action? What do you suppose could have happened to him anyhow? Well, sir, there's only one way to find out. If I told this to anyone who didn't know Witherby, They'd say it was a case of desertion in the face of the enemy. Oh, no, sir, not with me. I'm only telling you what it looks like, Sergeant. I don't buy a thing like that myself. But how am I going to account for him on our record? Well, Slocum said, and I distinctly remember this, he said uh, Witherby told him to go on and he'd be alone. That was last night. Where is he? I hope he's still in that cave. I hope the Reds haven't captured him. I hope he's still alive. I don't know, sir. I just hope. Well, the patrol should go out as soon as possible and find out. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah, that's a captain for you. He knows how I feel about Witherby. He knows I wanted to go out and look for him, but he also knows, and so do I, that first sergeants, as a rule, don't go out on patrols. I didn't want to put him on the spot by asking for his permission, and he didn't want to have to refuse me. So instead of saying, send out a patrol, he said, uh, a patrol should go out. Well, that made the order ambiguous enough for me to misunderstand it, you know, if I wanted to. Well, I got a hold of Slocum, and he volunteered to guide me to where the cave was. After all, he was with his buddy. We started out just before midnight. We had something like a mile to cover. We had just gotten inside the enemy lines, and we were making our way along the gully. Slocum had told us about when uh, things started to go wrong. Hurry. Don't move. Hey, they spotted us, Sarge. They did. It's all over. Maybe one of them thinks he heard something. Yeah. It's off the right. They must think we're headed back. They don't figure us to keep going. I don't like it. Their whole line's alert now. I'm not crazy about it either. All right, now. Try not to make a sound. Keep on your belly. Lead the way. So far, they don't see us. Yeah. 
so far. Don't, don't get nervous. It's still off to the right. Who's nervous? My teeth always chatter if I'm not asleep by midnight. You don't tell me that was off to the right. Ah, he's just a gun. I get him trigger happy. If he'd actually seen us, he'd be pouring it on. Hey, do you like the view around here? Thinking of buying this property, maybe building a house here? Come on, keep going, will you? Wait till I get my hands on that Witherby. Have to get online. Where are we? We're almost there, Sarge, but... But what? But this isn't how it was last night. The Reds were further back. They must have dug some new positions. There was nobody along here, Sarge. Hey, Sarge, maybe they found the cave. Maybe we'll walk in there right into a bunch of them. In that case, we'll walk right out. Oh, that Witherby. How crazy can a guy get? Witherby's still loose. We have to get to him right now. They know there's something up out here. I hear him moving around. Sarge, the cave, it's... It's just around a little bend in that gully. Okay, keep low and keep moving. Yeah. Sergeant's over there. You can't see it too well. The entrance is hidden behind those rocks. Okay, let me go first. In case of trouble, don't hang around. Beat it back. Sergeant, in here. You, Witherby. Come on in. Come on out. Slocum and me almost got our heads blown off trying to get here. We're not out of it yet. Sergeant, you must come in here and see what I found. I'm coming in, but it's just going to be to drag you out. Slocum, come in and keep the entrance covered here. I heard firing. I was afraid the enemy would come in here. I'm not ready to leave yet. Witherby, what's the big idea? Give me your lighter. All the fluid's gone in mine. You see, I needed light, but I couldn't keep it burning all the time, so I'd keep striking it and shutting it off. But even so, it ran dry. Hand me your lighter, Sergeant. Now, don't worry. They can't see the light from outside. Now, take a look. Hey, what is this place? What does it look like, Sergeant? It's a burial place. That's fine. Let's get out of here before it becomes our burial place. Will it be are you nuts? Sergeant, I make calculations. This is a prehistoric burial ground. These people, they're not the same race that lives in this country today. I've examined the skulls. Do you know what this means? I know we'll be lucky to get out of here and back to our outfit. What are these people doing here? Which people? These skeletons. There's at least a hundred of them. Men, women, children. From their artifacts, their knives, tools, weapons, I would place them in the early Bronze Age. Who oh. are they? How did they get here? With it be you and I and Slocum, we're going back to the outfit this minute. That's an order. Oh, just a minute, Sergeant. Don't just a minute me, with it be. I'll, I'll say it this way, Sergeant. You wouldn't give that order if you knew just what all this means to science. I'll tell you one of the reasons I enlisted. Later, with it be. Later. No, no, now, Sergeant. I don't know all the details and the specific problems of what it's all about, but in a general way, I do know that our side is interested in freedom and knowledge, and their side isn't. Well, I'm sure there's more to it than that, but even this much is good enough for me. I don't know exactly what I've run into here, but I do know it's a discovery that would interest our scientists. We have to protect it, because it's going to add to our knowledge of our Sarge, world. Sarge, I think I hear somebody coming. What are we going to do? I don't think we can move and not be spotted. You might be able to get out, Sergeant. I've explored this cave. There's a tunnel that leads to another exit further down the gully. Okay, we'll take a chance on it. Lead away. No, Sergeant. That's an order! Now, Sergeant, listen. One man can hold the entrance of this cave against a whole regiment, for a while, anyhow. You know yourself we're due to attack any hour. Now, Sergeant, I can always try to make it through the tunnel later. If I can't hold out... What's doing out there, Slocum? There seems to be a bunch of them out there somewhere. Maybe they'll spot the entrance. Maybe they won't. All right, come back here. Weatherby, where's that tunnel? In back of those rocks. All right. Weatherby and I will stay here. You follow the tunnel. See if the exit brings you out in the clear. Now, Slocum, the ground is lined on either side with pottery. It could be of great scientific value. Try not to break any. All right. Tell the captain to set up, you see? We're ready to launch the attack. Tell him. We can sneak a whole platoon in here the way you came out. Then we can move out to the entrance and take the Reds by surprise. Provided, of course, none of them spots the entrance to the cave. Now, move fast. Okay, Sergeant. Now, Weatherby, let you and I get up close to the entrance and hope none of the Reds are inquisitive as we were. Sergeant, you have struck a noble blow for science. Do you realize the value of this discovery? Uh, sure, and I also realize the value of this place as a military position. I see him. Just one of their guys prowling around. He's, he's coming closer. <laughs> he's looking straight at us. He's got to see the entrance. He just got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, he thinks he sees something. Now, now. Just pray he takes it into his head to investigate this himself. Just pray he doesn't call out to any of his buddies. Oh, I'm praying, Sergeant. Yeah, here he comes. He must have had a sergeant like you, Prescott. A sergeant who taught him how to be curious. All right. Let him come in. No noise now. Shh. Hey, 
Nice work. You know, for an archaeologist, you swing a pretty good rifle butt. Was he alone? No, it sounded like a couple of them out there. Jet! Probably called for our boy. Jet! Jet! I think they passed us by. Yeah, no, if nobody else comes stumbling around here, I would say we got us a good chance. I sure hope the captain can send a platoon through that tunnel in a hurry. You got a cigarette? Hey! Hey, Witherby, wake up, will you? What are you dreaming about? Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here you are. Oh, Sergeant, I, I think I'm in a cold sweat. These knives buried here with these people, I've never seen any quite like them. Made out of bronze, but you need tin and copper to make bronze. No tin around this part of the country. Now, how do they do it? And the design, the way the knives are curved, and, and how they taper outward. Now, who were these people, Sergeant, and what became of them? I can't place them in any known group. Why have we never heard of them before? Doesn't it make you wonder, Sergeant? People step onto the stage of history, play their brief part, and, and, and just vanish? Weatherby, to tell you the truth, I'm scared stiff. Scared, Sergeant? Man alive, all these bones. You realize what this is? A graveyard, it gives me the willies. Just before dawn, the captain sent the first platoon through the tunnel and into the cave. When the attack started, the company hit the enemy in front, and we poured out of the cave and broke them up from the rear. It was all over in half an hour. Everybody came to look at the cave. There was a whole business with pictures and reports, and later some scientists came from the States. And as far as I know, they're still classifying and arguing and having a hard time over just exactly what it means. On one thing, everyone is agreed on. It's a great discovery. As a matter of fact, they wanted to call it the Witherby discovery, but Witherby insists that uh, without my cooperation, the whole thing might have fallen into enemy hands. So he wasn't happy until they agreed to call it the uh, Witherby Prescott discovery. And so, uh, there you are. <laughs> if it should turn out as big as everyone thinks it will, I, James Prescott, Sergeant First Class, will go down in the history books as a man who made a great discovery. In the field of archaeology, no less. Young ladies between the ages of 20 and 33 who are college graduates, you are eligible for an executive career in the United States Army. If you can qualify for a direct commission in the Women's Army Corps, you will have many career fields from which to choose personnel and administration, legal, legislative, civil affairs, military government, and many, many others. You ask your local Army recruiter about how to start your career on the right side of the desk, the executive side. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.